1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70. 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90. 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now I'm going to go to the Yeah, because the top, the top looks fairly okay, but it must be still being saturated. So we're just doing, no, so we're just doing um, uh, fencing, fencing, and then there's going to be um, Chapodlianski. Then we're doing heats three and five for the swimming. And then, yeah. Um, just a mid, well, five is the quickest heat. And three, I don't know why they chose three. Basically, there's um, who won the fencing. Kipolianski won the fencing, so basically it's just guesswork. From yeah, because we've got no. The problem is because we've got no connection with um, with the sat truck, so they can't say interview in ten seconds or whatever. So it's basically as soon as he kind of stops fencing, it's just very or just very quick. Um, or I'll just say yeah, so we can out here.
Hello and welcome to Kaohsiung in Taiwan for the 2013 Modern Pentathlon World Championships. The women completed their event, which was won emphatically by Laura Asutskaitia. And now it's the turn of the men. A very talented field taking part, including the likes of Alexander Lissoun, James Cook, Sergei Kariakin as well. This kinder is Lithuanian who's having a fine season. I would like to be joined by all the Hungarians who are not having the best of championships here in Taiwan. There's Valentin Bilo from France. See there the junior world champion in 2010. Very talented athlete. Already bursting onto the scene third in Chengdu in the World Cup event this season. Just 20 years of age. It's really great to see the French team coming through. It wasn't very long ago that it was a surprise to even see one French man in the final. And we've actually got four French athletes in this World Championship men's final, which is quite something for the French team to be able to chat about. Absolutely. And there's Dmitry Kapolyansky from Ukraine. Very good result for him. Uh, 24 victories from his 35 bouts. Again, fencing really his strong discipline for Kapolyansky. Not so good when it comes to the riding or the swim. And there, of course, is Alexander Lissoun. Looks so good in qualifying. Uh, didn't win it, but well, from his own superstition, from what I hear, he doesn't like to uh, come first when it comes after qualifying, but so strong in the fencing. And 24 victories for him. Certainly someone to look out for. The Russians are always athletes to look out for, and the fencing is something that... You're traditionally strong in fencing, but are you ready to fight in the rest of the events? Uh, yeah, uh, I'm ready, and everybody ready. Today is a very strong uh, final. All uh, strongest athletes are here, and uh, uh, every fight I'm uh, fight uh, like you know, like like last fight because it's uh, main competition of this year, and uh, it's main competition for every athlete uh, for their life. That's why uh, today I'm uh, show uh, not bad result. It uh, one victory before um, uh, 1,000 points. That's why. Uh, uh, all struggle will be in uh, forward. The tight horses after women uh, riding today. Is it important options for your performance? Of course, it's a very important question and for now because, uh, you know, um, normally we have only two courses uh, and now we will have four courses. For horse it's very, very difficult and we will see what will happen to, uh, on our horse riding. That's why uh, athletes committee made some suggestion uh, to make uh, leaders to first round and uh, another uh, people who place it from 18 in city 66, uh, they have to ride uh, second round, but uh, they didn't change it and we will see what will happen. I think. Uh, we will see very, very, very <laughs> interesting fighting because you know it's mm, horsing, horses can change everything. Thanks so much. Thank you. So that was uh, Dmitry Kapulyansky, the winner of the fencing. Just to have a recap of the results. His joint winner with Alexander Lissoun. Kinderis right in the mix. Had a very good season so far for Lithuanian. For a lot there as well. So, big disappointment though for. Adam Maurashi, not on your screens there, just to show what a perfor performance he had. James Cook as well, who did so brilliantly um, in Budapest to win his maiden World Cup event. And this is an event where James Cook will excel the swimming. He'll be up a little later in the quickest heat. You can uh, join the action in heat three, featuring Kierpuljanski and Alexander Lissoun. They managed to get away. Now the swimmers have actually been commenting that it's the pool is very warm and the times as a result are actually a little bit slower than what you would expect at a World Championships. These athletes will have tapered and you know, trained their year around this. This is the time that they want to excel, that they want to be in peak condition. And as a result of that, at World Championships is when we see close to world records and you know the, the best times being performed. Yeah, um, 
But also, it's been to be quite tiring. I mean, as well, the women did suffer a lot more than the men when it came to this um, to these World Championships, having to compete four days in a row. At least the men did have some respite. But, um, it's been really tough on everyone, I suppose, just with the change in weather conditions. I mean, just the unpredictability, almost. Well, good times there for Lissoum. Staying well in contention. Swimming It's never going to catch the likes of James Cook or Adam Marashi, but a solid time for the Russian and the reigning world champion. So moving now to the quickest heats featuring Please James Cook and Nick Woodbridge from the United Kingdom. And Sergei Karyakin. Maxim Kustov from Russia. That's really as an event. Well, it's like Elodie Clu uh, Cluvel has made uh, for the women. Uh, James Cook has made this his event really his own for the men. He certainly has. And But coming into this, actually, after the semi-final results, um, Nicholas Woodbridge from Great Britain recorded a time quicker than what Jamie managed in, in his semi-finals. We Surroundings here in Kaohsiung, in the southwest of Taiwan. Thankfully, the typhoon has decided to move elsewhere, so we've got a wonderful blue skies for the riding event. About halfway through the course already. Just, uh, Valentin Prats, the young Frenchman, has just finished his ride. Just the 40 penalty points for the Frenchman. This is going to be very difficult, I think, for the riders with the horses, because, I mean, they were used in the women's event earlier, and these horses are going to be really, really tired. I think we could see that as um, a, a bit of a problem for the later riders in this round that we're now about to see. There was, there was talk, as Kipolanski said, of maybe making the, the top 18 ride first so that their horses were less fatigued, but they've kept to the original format, so the athletes coming in now are the top 18. And these horses, some of them will have actually been around this course three times already and entering into their fourth round in one day, which is something that luckily we don't see very often. Well, we have never seen at a World Championships. Yeah, I mean, um, there are a couple of riders who went uh, beforehand. I mean, Pavel Tomoshenko has actually won a World Cup event this season. Um, I mean, he picked up five penalty points. I mean, we, did, uh, we saw quite a few knockdowns of the women's, uh, but nothing sort of that, that severity especially with so few fences in comparison to a normal event. It is, obviously, they've reduced the amount of fences, they've reduced the warm-up time, but it's still, and they will have some horses that have been brought in that are different from the women's, but some of those will have done several rounds, and it is extremely hot out here. Yes. You can see that um, there's a lot of sweat on the events. Yeah, it's obviously... I mean, it can also play, play into advantage. These horses will now be comfortable around the course. The athletes will have been able to see their horse go already. And um, you know, some horses actually will improve as the day goes on. So it, it, could, it could go either way for these riders now. Absolutely. Well, it's Pier Paolo Petroni from Italy. The next to go. Of course, I mean, we've had a uh, baking sunshine really for the last uh, four or five hours. Do you think this will have helped uh, uh, drive a course out or do you not really think there's enough time? Because it was getting absolutely saturated this morning. It was, and actually, I think the breeze has, is probably adding to the fact. So the sunshine and the breeze is the best recipe for, yeah. Yeah, for the course to dry out. And they've also, you can see in patches on the takeoff and landing of each fence, they've laid some more sand down, which will have absorbed the the landing a little bit and that will all help but uh, if you can see that still on the corners the riders have got to be very careful and the ground is churned up from earlier whether it's dried out or not there's Petroni nice confident start from the Italian he did get that stride quite wrong but the horse oh, adapted he got that one certainly wrong This horse is looking quite keen and he's doing his best to control it. You can see there just bringing it back before the corner. It's when you want to really get control of your horse on that, on the bend before approaching another related distance. A couple of fences here. Three knockdowns are ready for Petroni. This final line. 
and that was a costly combination for him to end on. So, two five more. knockdowns, and I think that's yeah, Paolo Petroni's will the championship campaign done and dusted. <laughs> right up next, Sergey Karyakin. One of four Russians competing in the men's World Cup or World Championship final. Kilia Frov, shadow of Misun and Moisev. He's one of those athletes that is ne not quite broken onto the, those podium, yep. those podium positions. And just scanning through, the last time he was actually on the podium was right back in at Europeans when they were held in Britain. I'm just trying to find. That was a few years ago at Medway. So it doesn't look like unless he has an amazing ride today is going to change those statistics. But it's good, solid all-round athletes, uh, Kadiakin doesn't really excel in, a, in any particular discipline, but see how he gets on. Riding Xiao Qin. And this is when it, it could be important. We're not sure which athletes have been nominated for the team event, but the Russians will definitely be in team contention in, the, in this men's the competition. Certainly. And it'll be interesting to know who their chosen three athletes will be in that team. speed on the combine to make an impact. So another Korean up next, Jin Wai Young. See so many Koreans competing. We've already had a couple. Wu uh, Jin Lee and Kwon Ho Young. Yeah, they've got a, another men's solid team actually. And We've seen them in the top ten in the last few years. Yeah, it really has started to really develop uh, modern pentathlon in Korea, uh, both from the women's side and the men's side, which is always good to see, the broadening of the appeal of the sport. And it's one country who's not actually had to travel too far. No. <laughs> one, of, one of the few. No Taiwanese athletes made it through to the men's final. It'll be interesting to see who the home crowd are supporting. So Jin Wai Jung gets ready for his ride. From what I remember, he's actually done very well, uh, Jin Wai, this season when it comes to the riding. He's looked very consistent. Looks like he's in control most of the time when it comes to this discipline. Well, it's so far a, a, what I would call a tidy round. He's got, a, he's under control and it's going nice and smoothly so far. Just got in an extra stride there, which was needed. He didn't let it get too long. I mean, this course is much more straightforward than we would usually see at a world championships. Reduced amount of fences, smaller than usual, and also less technical. There's no, this is the only double fence. Yeah, There's he no covered well there. I mean, he, his approach was pretty ordinary, but managed to get over. And just the one knockdown for Jin Wa Jung, so he remains in contention. Looking for a top 10 finish. So the second of the Russians competitors up next, Maxim Kustov. Is a He's having, for him, a, a good competition so far as his um, results this year have not been anything to shout about. And um, his highest results so far this year has been 19th. Yeah, the European Championships mm. recently in Poland. Uh, didn't qualify for the World Cup, uh, World Cup final in Nizhny Novgorod. But then he is still very young, Absolutely. so plenty of time to develop and 
there's a big step up from junior level to seniors and the men take a little bit longer to really fully develop when you're training for five sports it's a lot for the body to adapt to and he's still got many years on his side and hopefully we'll see Come, comes from a swimming background i mean you can see my third place but he managed uh, in the swimming heat riding leo this is a horse we saw uh, certainly during the women's riding section so i think this might have been the horse that um, laura mm. the world champion rode yeah. earlier laura did have a few difficulties but then again lara's uh, get out of jail free card is uh, absolutely sensational combined mm -hmm. so how will stuff fare perhaps fatigue might play a part with this horse just clips for back rail but it's got lucky you just need to keep the momentum going man the the corner there i mean the time as we were talking about earlier is is generous so the athletes haven't got to really ride these corners which could be still a little slippery out there after all that rain that we had yesterday but it's still important to, to keep things moving forwards seems to be controlling the horse well enough and he's got lucky a couple of times there's been the odd rattle of a rail yep. but nothing has fallen just yet <laughs> again that commentator's curse yeah. So, just his final section to go for Maxim Kustov. Oh, he's over. So, I think that's a round that Kustov can be very proud about. Just the one pole. And, and a smile on his face for the young Russian. Gives the horse a well-deserved pat. That's always nice to see when the, the riders, you know, appreciate the horse's effort and something that, coming from a riding background myself, that I always feel it, the horses, especially today, they've, they've worked very hard and it's nice to see the athlete appreciating their ride. Well, perhaps a horse likes some apples and those sugar lumps or whatever horses like when he gets back to the stables. I think these horses today would, would just like a cold shower <laughs> <laughs> or maybe even a bath in this temperature. Yeah, it's, you cannot really underestimate how humid it is here in uh, Taiwan. And James Cook is up next. Well, he really had a massive breakthrough in the fourth leg of the World Cup this season in Budapest. He was won by a huge margin. And he's on uh, Chico, who again was uh, used in the women's event. Well, had a sensational fence on that day in Budapest. Um, didn't get the same result here. He he'd have liked. Yeah, his, his fence today was sort of back down in the 700s. But luckily for Jamie, the fencing actually, the results were very close. And with such a strong swim, he considerably moved up the field. And we'll be looking to, you know, towards that maybe that top 10 position we'll see he'll be obviously hoping for a very good ride and putting him in contention there because he will be looking to back up that that amazing win he had at world cup four and he'll want to finish the year on you know saying that actually that wasn't a one-off this is something very i want recovery to recovery i want to watch out for getting him in a bit tight to fences he just needs That's to better. keep it moving stride back and back on track Just in that fraction too close and well rescued, I think. Um, I was worried that second pole was going to go as well. Uh, this final combination now. Oh, well and done. well negotiated there, Jamie. Well done. So just one knockdown for James Cook. Leaving him very well, very much in contention still. I think that'll be relief from Jamie there because we've been seeing all sorts many more poles than that going so just the 40 penalties that he's that he's lost from that fence where he did get a little bit too close so up next uh, Robert Kasha of Hungary he's carrying the hopes for Hungary in this uh, world championships uh, world championships they really want to forget I mean one of the main hopes in the women's event Leila Gernishi not even making it into the final. Uh, Adam Maurishi, well, you can never really count him out. He's got a very solid combine, but languishing down the standings after a very poor fence by his uh, very high standards. 
Yeah, it's really not been his competition today or, or Hungary's over these few days, really. As you say, it's unusual. Only two girls in the final and, you know, not making any impression on the, the top half of the women's results. And now the men are not by any means dominating here either. Well, Robert Kasher, solid results in both the fencing and the, and the swimming. It's 12th in the fencing. Overall, and a neat place finish in the swimming, so good solid round. Certainly leave him with a chance of getting a top 10 finish. I mean, he had a silver medal at the Europeans, which will be would have boosted his confidence from this year, and it's um, you know the the standout result for him in 2013. Absolutely, it's, uh, the Europeans weren't that long ago, so that probably means he's in some sort of form. It should do. That would have been the last big competition these athletes would have competed at, and and they've had long enough from that to do another cycle of training, and you know refocus and get ready for the World Championships. So we should see some strong performances later in the running part of the combined event. It's going well so far. The horse just went to put another stride and change his mind at the last minute, but luckily Robert managed to go with it, and there was no Spirit problem as a result. Yeah. The, the speed now, he's unfortunately paying for it, and he'll have more problems here if he's not careful. Yeah, it's got round in 47 seconds, but really time is irrelevant. So 200 penalty points, this is really going to cost him. Way down into 26th place provisionally for Jian Li Gao. So, next up is another Frenchman. Pat. Yeah, one of three Frenchmen in the uh, top 10. He's had a very good season, in fact. He was uh, fifth in Budapest, six at Rio, in Rio de Janeiro, 13th from Palm Springs, seventh last time out of the European Championships, so certainly someone to, someone who's very consistent and someone to keep an eye out for and still very young. Yeah, the French are a young team and it's great to see them sort of there, thereabouts so regularly at the moment and they're moving in the in the right direction. It's it's quite exciting for the French to to have the strength here. It used to be the women who led the way for the French team, and men have certainly overtaken them at the moment. It's 23 years of age. Taking a long way around to come back and salute to the judges there. She's been on the podium in World Cup events, uh, finished third last year at the World Cup event in uh, Rostov in Russia. That was a junior European champion in the relay in Poland in September 2011. Uh, decent results in London actually, the Olympics where he was 17th. He's one of those athletes that's still very young but has actually competed quite a lot. Yeah. Um, I think because the French team have been thinner on the ground over the years that he's actually had to step up or had the opportunity to step up and compete at senior level, maybe before some other athletes would. It's going rather quickly. There's still uh, knockdowns. Getting in a bit close there, but recovery and actually even though he went in at an angle as a result of that he had to correct his course and made himself more room to mm. get the right stride for that second part oh what a shame probably a hand of the horse well, very quick horse very well just a uh, knockdown on that last fence spoiling what would have been a perfect round for Christoph Pat moves to the crowd and getting a warm round of applause yeah, he's happy with that one, and I, and I think he should be, because just the one pole down, that's only 40 penalties taken off the elusive 1,200, the maximum score you can get on the riding. Well, up next is Ilya Fralov of Russia. 
He's had a few problems this season when it comes to the riding. I remember, I think it was in Palm Springs in the mixed event. Just had an absolute nightmare where his horse just wouldn't, did not want to go round the course. Um, so many refusals, was forced to retire. So, has been nemesis to a certain extent, the riding. Been there are thereabouts this season, fourth at the World Cup final in Nizhny Novgorod, fourth in Palm Springs, eighth in Rio, eighth in Budapest. Desperate to try and get a podium finish here. He certainly will be, and there's such strong competition in the men's. I mean, this might be a, the year after the Olympics, and things can sometimes be a little bit more open, but there's a lot of the top contenders are here today and in good form as well. Not the most confident starts, I would have said. He's getting round. Well, the jumps are considerably smaller than they would be at a, a, what one would expect at a World Championships. And that does actually mean that there's room for a little bit more error. And they can sort of, if they make mistakes, they aren't necessarily so crucial and they might not cause a, po a pole to fall down. Stutters again, but. He just heard. Aesthetically pleasing, right? They just touched that pole there, but it stayed. Oh, what a shame. <laughs> well, he did he did lose control there, but managed to keep yeah. keep his leg on. He lost his contact with his reins there, and as you see, holding on for the hill open. He knows that he was so close yeah. to a great 1200 score, but that last pole was oh. definitely coming down. Yeah. <laughs> I think when he looks back, he'll be actually delighted with that score. Okay, he did give a knock down on the last fence but still he'll be very much in contention he's got a decent combined as well so another frenchman up next valentine bello and another frenchman that's been on a podium this year mm, and just 20 years of age third in chengdu which was a third world cup event of the season So what has been the reason for the French revival, really? I think it's just the fact that their athletes, they've, they've had a lot of athletes coming through and they're all in their early 20s and now starting to, to manage to actually make an impact on the senior scene. You know, they're still competing at junior level, some of these boys, and it's a big step up, as I said, and they're about ready. And it's not that they've suddenly appeared, they're just suddenly appearing on the, on the senior circuit. And I think the fact that there was a big gap in age, the, the senior athletes retired quite a while ago, and it sort of left this big, big void for the French team, but it also meant that they had lots of opportunities to compete at competitions when there were absolutely no expectations on them. And, you know, they're really starting to show what that experience is, uh, you know, how it's converting and how it's helping them on but the senior circuit. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, uh, Bello, I mean, he's competed actually on the junior circuit this season. He competed at the junior European Championships in Sofia, where he actually managed a fourth place position. Won the World Juniors last year in Poland. Bello getting underway. Oh, takes a fall. I think that's the first four we see yeah, today. Yeah, absolutely. Which I'm pleased to say, not that he's fallen off, but pleased to say that we haven't had any other yeah. falls, which is a, a sign that the maybe the riding standard is improved. He's folding nicely with the horse, and I'm so far this round's looking tidy. Certainly taking his time. As we said earlier, I mean, there's no rush for the competitors to get round in a hurry. Very generous with no, the time he's limits. Just speeding up a little bit into this line here. Oh, but he gets over just to us. Yeah. The horse. That was just looking a little bit too fast, and, and we did hear him rattle that final part, but luck was on his side, I think. The pole oh, bounced back in again. From PS Aircraft. Seen that horse already. Yeah. yeah. This, uh, a name you won't event. forget, really, isn't no. it? <laughs> Actually, a lot of thought went into the naming that horse. Okay, so we're into the top five now. The uh, final Frenchman up next. 
and the most experienced in the out of the French team actually. The Jean Maxence uh, Berrou, the, the senior athlete of, of the the four Frenchmen. He's had a very good season, third in Budapest, tenth at the World Cup final in Nizhny Novgorod, fifth at the recent European Championships in Poland. So. Good ride, we'll see him very much in contention. It's been very solid so far. Seventh after the fencing, seventh after the swimming. We'll get a seventh here after I'm riding. And Jean Max has got a he's got a very strong run. I know he's had a, a few injury issues over the past couple of years, but oh, this is worrying me. I'm hoping he's gonna <laughs> coming around yeah, coming around that corner there. I just needed to rein things in, if you excuse the pun, um, a little. And he looks like it's maybe not quite his choice to be going as fast as he was into that first fence. This is uh, Jin Xing. This is a horse that uh, Pavel Tomoshinka had all sorts of trouble with uh, earlier in the event. But uh, Jean Maxence is uh, handling the horse yes. slightly better. After the start, things were looking like they could end up, we could end up having poles in all directions, but it's been recovered so far. Oh, got the stripe pattern there, all wrong. This horse is quite, it's one of the smaller ones, the shorter stride, so easier to correct if you do get a first part of a related distance wrong. And again, they're corrected wrong on the first part of the double. Clear on the way out. So, three, three knockdowns, 120 penalty points for Jean Marc Sans of France. A bit better than Timoshenko, who had uh, 200 penalty points. So, next up is uh, Justin Skindovic from Lithuania. It's been a real fine this season. Well, he's been around for quite a while, but he's had an excellent season. Uh, the Lithuanian finished second at the World Cup final in Nizhny Novgorod. And now we welcome number 23, Christina Steiner. Could he make it a Lithuanian double at these championships? Well, we saw. His compatriot Laura Asutuskaiti have run away with the women's individual title. Just to play beach volleyball in his spare time. Save for the London Olympics last year. Seventh for the World Cup events in Budapest this season. So a lot of pedigree. He certainly has, and I think you know, being ranked fourth in the world at this time of year and the in the men's senior rankings at the moment. There's not been many athletes to retire after after London, and it's a strong field here today. Decent swim, where is 16th. And an excellent ride for the Lithuanian athlete. Right, up next, Alexander Lissoun. He's been a stunning athlete over the last Five years or so, but it's had one problem, it's been riding. Came into the riding just one second of the lead. It's riding Nita. It's ridden by Juan Ho Jung, who actually went clear on the horse earlier in the round. Well, obviously, as defending world champion, he's going to be, well, he's put himself so far in contention to be able to defend that title. Well, someone well, who can handle the pressure, it's certainly going to be Lissoun. And this will be the event that really decides these top, makes the difference between these top few athletes here left in the competition. Just got that stride pattern a bit wrong. Just hear his coach out of the back of my ear shouting some instructions to Lissoun. I think that's more frustrations there. He's wanting, he's wanting him to move forwards. It's just a little bit too slow, which is something that I don't find myself saying about Russian riders very often. Yes. Um, but he does need to move it forwards a little bit. It's nice and controlled, but a little, needs a little bit more energy here. Yeah, so off this corner, he really needs to ride forwards. Still not quite but got away with it. Yeah. Managed to get in that extra stride by moving over to the right. The final line. Ooh. And Lissoun goes clear. Huge 
huge applause from the Russian section about five meters away from me. And they are delighted, as is Lissoun, his coach. We just see the Russian coach there giving, giving, giving us a fist bump. <laughs> And as I was saying, that title could now very much be his again this year. Obviously, it's still the combined to go and still two more riders to go. But he's put himself in serious, serious contention for that gold medal later. Well, it's the second time during this, uh, this event that uh, his fat horse Nita has gone clear. So certainly had a good, good draw. Up it's Nick, next is Nick Woodbridge riding Clyde. Um, Ridden by another Korean, Jin Woo Lee. Uh, 40 penalty points. Well, Nick will be re have been reassured to know that this horse only had one pole, as you said, in the round previously. And from a riding background, he's got knows knows what he's doing out here. So, fingers crossed for Great Britain that he can deliver on this world stage today. He's a whip there. Giving it a start to focus on the combined event, which we we have coming up. Fairly shortly, yeah. Fairly shortly. But uh, it's a bit of uh, modern pentathlon as well, especially a riding event. You get someone like Lassoon, who just looks all at sea, but managed to get round clear. I and mean, then you have someone like Woodbridge, who rides a very good. It does make round. It, it does make it very frustrating. I mean, Lassoon rode rode well, but maybe I'm slightly biased. But I'm pretty sure Nick rode better, and I think there's a few people that agree with me on that. And and yes, he you know he's just given away those 40 points which equate to valuable seconds in the combined. Well, absolutely. I mean, as we've talked about uh, on many occasions so far today, I mean, this isn't the most testing of courses, so it's more of a level playing field for the likes of Lissoum, who perhaps aren't the greatest of riders. I mean, he'd probably be the first to admit, but it isn't the best, his best discipline. And I think that's why we saw such a, a reaction from the Russian yes. team when he went and got that clear round. So this is... Dmitry Kpolyansky from Ukraine. Ooh, how he got over that fence, I don't know. <laughs> that was that was very genuine from that horse, because that was completely wrong. He'd stopped riding, and I think he thought that there was no way they were going over it. And once the rider thinks that, it's very rare for a horse to, to continue. And not only that, he was up its neck on sure. the landing and, and well recovered. It's a knockdown there. Now he's shaking his head. He shouldn't be letting those poles affect him. He's looking towards the next fence. Not noticing what's happened behind you. Getting over, so just this final section to go for Kirpulyansky. Somebody goes clear here, and he does. So just for one. Not now that means that with one pole, exactly. Well, yeah, at is. the moment, they haven't quite registered it, but it well, was the the, more, but certainly the one knockdown. Yep. That means that him and Nick are going to still, Nick Woodbridge from Great Britain, are going to be on the exactly same score as they were before the riding. And we're yet to see whether the sun has overtaken them on the, the rankings before this combined event that's coming up. Let's have another look. in really close there and he went to jump the jump before the horse did luckily the horse came with him and picked him up on the other side quite literally i think that well, well it's going to be said it's going to be so tight going into the combined well alexander lissoun will start in first place just four seconds ahead of justin Kinderis. Of Pabti, Kasha, James Cook still in with very good shouts. Just over 30 seconds behind. I think maybe Adam Marashi might fancy his chances. I mean, especially if he gets a very good shoot. I mean, he's a minute behind, but he's very good at the combined. So, just like the women's event, this is going to be very, very open. I think, I think it will be, but it's not quite as close as the women's event I'm, I'm i'm feeling and maybe we won't see someone coming from quite as far down as adam is but then we say there's four shoots they're shooting indoors today yep. and it's it's definitely affected some athletes and it'll be interesting to see if there can be such dramatic changes in the order well do be sure to join us for the combined which will get underway shortly but from myself richard van paul fleet and myself heather fell 
Let's goodbye for now and be sure to join us just around an hour's time. Goodbye for now.